Everybody, Thomas here. It's been a little bit since I posted a video, especially on a video on the sawmill. Uh, last weekend, septic system issues popped up. I was not able to shoot any videos. So, yeah, tractor's really dirty, but we got the job done using the front end loader to install new field lines. Check out that video if you have any <coughs> me, questions about that. But right now, we're working on this cedar. This cedar log right here, this is a log that I've actually had on the mill probably for about three weeks. It's been about three weeks since I ran the sawmill, which is crazy. It's been one of the longest times I've gone without running a sawmill. But what we have here is a lot of doting on the inside. I know the intended users of this log. Um, so this is going to be folks who do epoxy type work because I'm seeing doting down here. I'm pretty sure there's a whole lot more on the other side. But these pieces like this are what uh, my epoxy customers love to work with. Cedar is a very forgiving wood, easy to work with and you can actually cut it thinner so easier to fill if this was oak or something like that if i was going to slab this up i would do no less than two inch slabs but since it's a cedar we're going to do inch and a half slabs or thereabouts my outside cuts could be a little bit like thinner than that but we're going to go with inch and a half slabs the length on this if you count the bunks or anything and, and a little overlap here we have about 12 foot in length widest here in this direction looks like 16 to 18 inches on this side probably 20 22 on the other side so pretty nice straight log i've got it up on the bunks where it's pretty level i'm gonna go ahead and do my reference cut here i do have a limb on the back side right over there i'm going to actually have to cut off with a chainsaw in order to allow the head go down the track but again since i know this is going to go to epoxy folks and since cedar is so stable an inch and a half is what i'm going to be cutting these at if I was to cut this at two inches, that's just another half an inch more of fill that they'll have to do with epoxy, and epoxy is not cheap. So I try to cut the logs based on the intended customer. The other thing is I could cut this log down into two smaller sections. Yes, it's at 12 foot long, and it is quite large. However, I could also cut it down to the specific customer, or someone may say, hey, I need a 12 foot long bar top. What do you have? And then I could actually have something, say, book matched out. Um, so yeah, you just kind of know what your customers are. I will say though, storage of a 12 foot long slab like this will be difficult. But as I remove things out of my barn out back, I haven't removed things out of here. This is always going to be a mess. But as I remove things out of the barn out back, I do have more room. I like to store these type of slabs in a vertical direction. And I have about a 14-ish foot ceiling back there, so that should be no issue. So again, I'm going to throw in a time lapse. I've got a few things I got to do. I got to cut off some limbs off the back side. Got to put a new blade on. All that type of fun stuff. And then we'll get to cutting. Because I know that's what people want to see. I haven't cut in a while. And I do apologize for that. But stand by. Okay, so some little maintenance and stuff like that completed. Went ahead and cut off a little stick on the other side, if you will. Greased my guide wheels, added water into my tank, letting the uh, sawmill warm up just a little bit. Just, you know, things I haven't, I haven't ran the sawmill in three weeks, so I just had to make sure everything's good. I've uh, got the new blade on there, and now we're gonna go ahead and commence cutting. I'll do these two cuts real time. These are my reference cut. I've lowered the blade down. You wanna make your first cut count. I think I will get all the way through and still have a flat surface on the bottom. So first cut is critical, otherwise you're making a second cut. So make that first cut count. Gone down a little bit deep there. I might pop down just a little bit more looking at it from this angle. So first cut count, then we'll flip it over and I'll get on a inch and a half scale. And then uh, we'll talk about what we uh, see on the inside.
the first cut went very well. Second cut on this one, I didn't go deep enough. So <laughs> always go a little bit on the thing. Um, but I was going on the, the scale there with the computer. But as you see, I end up with some goofy pieces like this. Not bad. Um, there was definitely some damage on this side of the, uh, the log, which is fine because I still have a really nice piece right here that I could turn into something, a sign, or, or even sell to one of my customers. Very rustic looking, I like that. And then the, the first cut that I did on the other side, it's actually pretty thick. It could be a very rustic bench. Even this works out pretty well as well. The dogs have found something to dig at here. I don't know what it is. Okay, so we do have a damaged section here. I guess is when the tree fell. This is a tree that came out of Florida after Hurricane Michael, I believe, the one that hit uh, Panama City area, uh, actually Apalachicola area. So I'm gonna do one more cut on this side probably because I am getting into a weird situation with some root, not roots, but some uh, sticks or, and branches that branch off the other side. So I'll do one more cut on this side, get a nice, clean surface to work off of because I've got a little weird stuff here. And I'm going to flip it over 180 and slab from the other side. The first slab that's going to come off this other side is going to be, you know, grade A in my opinion because there's there's no doting. Uh, it's very clean looking. It has some great color. So I'm going to film a time lapse, not to make these videos too long, and uh, then we'll see kind of what the, uh, the end slabs look like quick little video and then I have to talk about what we're doing this weekend. There's some really cool stuff happening this weekend. Folks, it is absolutely beautiful today. I had to make the camera actually get the background because the sky is beautiful. Love it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get these slabs off here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six slabs at an inch and a half. Plus, I've got one slab over there, so we'll say seven slabs. This right here was that quote unquote bottom slab I was talking about, it's like top quality. This is beautiful. I love the way this slab looks. On the bottom side here, there's a smidge of some soft spots there, but this top side, which is the orientation that I would use it, is where it's at. This would be a perfect, uh, I don't know, little shelf bar, something like that. I'm not going to be able to dust off each one of these slabs based on where I'm at, but on the bottom side, we can see it. Make sure we can see this in the camera. Yeah, that looks good. That looks darn good. All right, so again, nice soft spots here that the epoxy folks love <laughs> us not epoxy folks maybe not so much but uh i am excited uh, i've got some great people uh, mr Kerry and his wife they are awesome people subscribers of the channel they love to work with cedar and they do some absolute amazing stuff if you ever get the chance november ish time down here in loosedale mississippi around the Gulf Coast is when we do Gingham Tree. The Gingham Tree Festival is awesome. And Mr. Carey and his wife, they uh, they do some beautiful work out there. And that's where we actually met like two years ago. Again, this is right up their alley, perfect. Um, they are long, but they can be cut down to whatever size that the uh, end user would like. And these middle ones here are really wide. Um, I'd say 16 to 18 inches here, 22-ish down there. Very nice slab. Again, the only use of this log was I was thinking for the epoxy folks because of how much heart uh, doting or whatever you want to call it was in here. 
Down here in the Gulf Coast, I see this more so. I don't know if it's due to our heat or whatever, but the cedar trees, they just can't really do that well. Um, once they get above, say, 80, 60, 80 years, just not that great. Uh, once, I mean, up in uh, Tennessee, I've got some cedar trees that I've counted the rings in the 80 to 100 year range that are nice and clean and perfect. Once you get beyond like 100, 120 years, I, I do see doting up there as well. But I guess, I don't know if it's, maybe it's moisture issues, maybe it's heat issues, I don't know. But, beautiful stuff. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And I'm dwindling down my wood pile we only have a few more months here we're going to be putting the house on the sale up for sale probably in the next 60 days well, apparently the chicken didn't like that but next 60 days we'll be putting the house up for sale and it'll be sad leaving here we've absolutely loved this area but uh with navy calls we got to go up to wisconsin which i'm actually excited about and i have some subscribers of the channel who watch it up there and I've been talking to them and I cannot wait to get up there. It's gonna be a fantastic time. So you've seen these slabs here, they look great. I got the one slab over here. So I mean, I mean, I don't mean to move the camera too much. We have this slab over here. This is like our first cut on that side that had the damage. It's nice too. I would actually probably cut it about right here and make two different projects out of this, but beautiful, easy to work. That right there, I can make an easy, little coffee table out of. That's probably what I'll do. In fact, I'll probably come in right about here where this is, make some kind of interesting cut there, and just make that into a coffee table, some hairpin legs. Really easy to sell, and they're just beautiful, beautiful cedar. So, this weekend, turn this around here. This weekend we've got some folks coming in town. Um, we've had some communications, or Mr. Robert has had some communications for people that I consider to be, what do you call it, um, celebrities in the sawmill world and the blade world and stuff like that. So Mr. Joe Main has talked to Mr. Robert a few times and I'm hoping I get to talk to him as well this weekend as well as uh, Mr. Jerry from Jerry's ReSharp. So that's really cool. Robert gets out there, he talks to the blade manufacturers, he talks to the people who know what they are talking about so then in turn, he knows, in fact, what he is talking about. But this weekend, we're going to be doing um, some videos with some friends of Mr. Joe Main. And we're going to be doing the setup of the Cook's Cat Claw Sharpener and stuff like that. Also, we'll be getting a Talon Sharpener, a Timber King Talon Sharpener setter. And we're we'll going to see if we can do some videos on that. That may be this weekend or the following weekend. I'm not 100% sure yet. But there will be a lot of videos involving setters, sharpeners, how to maintenance, upkeep, and stuff like that. So it's going to be exciting. We're going to be doing a lot of shooting and videos this weekend. And I, I'm really looking forward to it. It's something I've been looking forward to a while. And I'm also thinking about maybe this weekend, probably not, maybe the following weekend, doing a YouTube live event with Mr. Robert and actually talking anything people want to know about saw blades, sharpeners, setters, stuff like that. Mr. Robert, as you all know, is a talker. And he's a wealth of information. I mean, he is, he's about as true as they come. I know a lot of people on the channel have contacted him before. And they all say he's a hoot to talk to. You know, he's down to earth, this, that, and the other. Because there is no editing. Well, I have to edit some things, he says. But there's no editing around Mr. Robert. That's He's the real deal. So, yeah, hopefully uh, I'll put some information out prior to if we do a live event. Because I'd like to see some real-time questions and answer. Um, I think that'd be a lot of fun. And then you could see the full experience of Mr. Robert. In all of his glory. <laughs> all right, good stuff. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully it's not too terribly long. And I've got some more stuff coming up. I've got to get out here and do some more work. I need to start working on the boys' room, the cypress and Chinese fur. That might be going up this weekend if I have time. And we'll see. So, again, please like, subscribe. That really helps out the channel to get it growing. And also, tell your friends about me, if you would. I'm trying to get the algorithm to work out a little bit better. Um... But yeah, I'm just a, just a guy who likes cutting on the sawmill. And I'm trying to tell it as it is. I don't try to sugarcoat anything. I'm not sponsored by anybody. This is just something fun I like to do. And also, I do have information on carbide tip blades. 
That video I'll probably shoot this weekend as well. They are finally in-house. The company I've got them from are finally in-house. We're going to talk about prices and stuff like that. So we'll see you around. Thanks again.